everyone, hope you're all doing well. Today in this video, I'll be showing you how to make the name puzzles that I have been making for quite some time. I'm gonna show you all that you need, the tools as well as the materials you need. Um, I have everything set up here, so I'm gonna show you that. But just a heads up, this project does require you to have a scroll saw or the one tool that you will absolutely need. So anyways, let's get started. I'm gonna show you first all of the things that you will need for this project. This is everything that I use to make the name puzzles. So I'll go through each one and don't worry about what I was doing here. I will show you the process of that. But first let's focus on materials. So first I purchase at my local lumber yard some walnut as well as some red oak. And these are just short of an inch thick. But make sure that they are the same thickness. And then I also use half inch thick of birch plywood. And I usually buy this at Home Depot as well as a quarter inch birch plywood. And then I use painter's tape, some sandpaper with the block, some spray adhesive, an X-Acto knife, drill, and some tongue oil or any wood oil is fine. Okay, so the very first step in making this name puzzle is we have to design. So I use Canva, so I'm just gonna show you real quick how I design it. You can put create a design, put a custom size, and make sure you change it to inches. And do the size about 13 inches. It always changes depending on the name, but this for this name, I'm gonna put 13 inches by 3.5 create design and then I'm gonna add the name add text okay, the font that I use is Fredoka one and I want to make it outline so I go to the effects hollow and I put it where I want to make sure it is center and last thing you want to do is make sure that the background is dark. Maybe like that. That way, uh, when you cut, you'll be able to cut along the line and you can see where that line is clearly. Okay, so after designing on Canva, I just sent it to my laptop and I dragged the name onto my Excel program. And here I'm just checking that the height is 3.5 and the width is 13 inches and everything looks good so I'm going to print out two copies of this name but this name it won't fit on a regular eight and a half by eleven paper right so it will print majority of the name on one paper and then the remainder of the name will be on another paper so you will just have to tape the name together and then that will be used as your template okay so here we are again outside and after designing and printing out two copies of the names what you will be doing with these two names one you will be cutting out each individual letter so that's what i did here and the other one you're going to save as a whole piece and you will be using it to cut out the actual rectangle or um, outline of the name puzzle and as you can see <laughs> I rounded the edges. I used the top lid of a perfume bottle. Yeah, so you could use anything around really. But first for this one, you will be gluing this on top of the half inch birch plywood. And then you will also be gluing the half inch birch plywood on top of the quarter inch birch plywood. One important step though is to make sure to use painter's tape. So I'm going to put painter's tape all covering the surface of this as well as the back of this and the top of the bottom piece. Why do I use it is because it just makes it so much easier when you glue two pieces together. You're gonna have to separate it eventually and it's really hard to separate if you don't have tape in between. But for the second copy of the name you printed out, I cut each individual letter out and I placed some on the walnut, some on the red oak depending on where they need to go. So I looked at the letters and I wanted P to start with walnut. So it's here. So walnut, red oak, walnut, red oak, walnut, red oak. So I'm going to put tape on here. I'm gonna glue those together and then I will show you what's next. So 
after gluing the name and the two pieces of plywood together, it's ready to go to the scroll saw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use probably a size nine blade on my scroll saw to cut out along the line, the very light line here. I'm gonna do my best. And the purpose of this is basically just to cut out the outline of the name puzzle itself. And then afterwards, we're going to separate these two woods so that we can now carve out where each letter will be sitting. So first, let's go to the scroll saw and cut out the outline. that they are both the exact same shape. I'm gonna put that one aside and I'm gonna focus on this one now. This will be used as the place to hold the letters in. So I have to cut each of these letters out. I'm gonna be drilling little holes inside each of the letters and I'll be cutting them out. One thing to consider with name puzzles, I am going to cut on the outer edge of the P because with these ones, I want them to fit nicely inside where they need to go. But if I cut them each at the in the same spot, it's gonna be very hard for kids to fit the puzzle pieces inside, right? So for this one, I cut on the outside of the black line. And for these, I cut Actually, I cut like right in the middle. I could cut on the inner black line, but I cut like right in the middle. So that's just something to keep in mind, just to give some wiggle room for the letters to sit in. All right, let's drill some holes. Okay, so just as I cut the outer black of the P, I will be doing that to the rest of the letters. So I actually decided to switch out that last blade with a thinner blade. It's a size five. It will cut nicer on this half inch. Okay, so for the O, I want to keep the middle part so that I can glue it on top of the bottom piece. So what I'm going to do is cut the middle part out first, the circle, and then I will cut out the remainder. Because if I cut out the big circle first and then I try to scroll out a tiny circle from a big circle, it's going to be really difficult. So I will be cutting out the inner circle first. are cut out and let's take this off looks pretty good just need some sanding and then let's also take the tape off of this like that I'm gonna sand the front and the back looks pretty good now so let's get started let's start cutting this so the first thing that we need to do is cut out the inner parts so I'm going to use my drill to cut out the inner part of the O as well as the P's okay so I'm switching my blade to a size 12 
Okay, so actually before I cut those letters out, I wanted to show you how to move on with this process before it gets too late and too dark for you guys to see. So I did also forget to mention that you will need some glue. I used tight bond and also Gorilla Glue Super Gel, Super Glue Gel, or you can use this one, the Loctite, either one of these. So first, basically what I'll be doing is I'm gonna just put glue all around, not too much because you don't want it to leak inside where the letters are. So now, uh, actually I wanna sand this smooth a little bit more. So the Loctite glue that I use will help it so it glues quick and so it's not like sliding everywhere. And it's where I want it so I'll probably go sit on it <laughs> and wait for it to dry. Okay, we are almost done. So after it is glued tightly together, the next step is optional. I like to do it because I think it makes it look really nice, but what I will be doing is edge bending the sides because if you look at the sides, I'm not sure if you can see it very clearly, but they're pretty rough. So I uh, usually get some edge band and I will show you. Um, so if you wanna do this step, you should buy some edge banding. I don't know if it's called edge banding or edge band, but I, I got it on Amazon and I think I typed in like, birch ply edge banding and then you'll find it so anyways i will edge bend the sides and you also need an iron so that it will stick okay so this is the edge banding that i was talking to you about um basically it's just a long strip of birch and i have my iron and i'm just going to line it along the edge and as I go, I'm going to use the iron. There will be some extra, but we will take that off later with the exacto knife. Okay, once you get to this point, you are going to grab your X-Acto knife and you're going to cut it. So after you're done cutting the letters, what you're going to do is now sand them. So I use a block and it, I'm using 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to sand as much as I can. And I also do sand the corners a bit or the edges so that they're not so sharp. We are done cutting out all the letters and now my favorite part is oiling the hardwood it makes it look so beautiful so i'm going to be using watco 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 not sure how to pronounce it tongue oil and i'm going to bathe them in oil um so let's get started
that is it friends. I hope that you learned a lot. I hope I explained it well enough. <laughs> um, I'm still getting used to this YouTube and explaining but look it turned out so nice. If you liked this video uh, please subscribe. Subscribe. I almost said prescribe. <laughs> please subscribe to my video and there will be more videos to come anything that involves a squirrel saw or any other fun little wood projects uh, i will be sharing so uh, thank you and i'll see you next time